Hi everyone, it's Monday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time and this is Admissions Live. I'm your host, Nicole Lentini, and today on the show I'm speaking to Kim Major, Associate Director of Admission at St. Anselm College, Bryn Campbell, Associate Director of Admission at St. Joseph's University, Erin Earle, Director of Campus Visit Experience at the University of Rhode Island, and Christina Ber Berardi, Associate Director of Admissions Communications and Marketing at Salve Regina University to discuss the Women Council for Admissions Professionals. Admissions Live is part of the Higher Ed Live Network, a series of professional development web shows and podcasts which are always free and accessible to you in the archives at higheredlive.com and on iTunes. Be part of our broadcast by tuning in live and sharing your insights and questions using the Higher Ed Live hashtag on Twitter. You can receive weekly updates with live show dates and times by subscribing to the Higher Ed Live newsletter. We just shared a link to that in, on the Twitter account. Today's show would not be possible without the support of Champlain College and M. Stoner. Higher Ed Live is produced by M. Stoner, a marketing and communications firm that works with education institutions on branding, strategy, web design, and more. Two never-before-released chapters from M. Stoner's books, Social Works and Follow the Leader, are now available for download as audio chapters. We're tweeting out a link where you can download these chapters for free and learn more about M. Stoner's helpful resources. Admissions Live is sponsored by Chegg Enrollment Services. Heading to the 2015 NACAG conference in San Diego, Chegg will be out in full force with its free Ship Your Swag sponsorship, as well as their Admissions Maverick social board, the USS Midway. To stay up to date on all things, on all great things Chegg is doing to support an amazing NACAG conference, visit their website at http. Uh, uh, colon slash slash edu dot chegg dot com slash NACAC or follow the link we're posting on Twitter which will probably be more uh, easy to put together than how I just said that um, so check out my Twitter account and the Higher Live Twitter account and you'll see a link to that now so, without further ado, I'm excited to introduce my guests. We have a wonderful panel of some of the founders of WeCap, as well as some of the members. Um, so I'm going to have each of them introduce themselves with a little bit about themselves and their history in higher education. Um, so we will start with the founders first. So Tina, do you want to introduce yourself first? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for tuning in. My name is Tina Berardi. Um, I am the Associate Dean of Admission um, at Salve Regina University. I actually just um, started here about a month ago, um, and I'm, I'm very excited to be part of this great team. Um, it, just a little bit about my history and admissions. I started at the University of Rhode Island, um, then moved to Dean College, um, and am now here at Salve. Awesome. Thank you, Tina. And how about you, Erin? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Erin Earle. I am the director of the Campus Visit Experience at the University of Rhode Island. And I um, have been there for 11 years. It's actually my alma mater. I graduated from URI, so I've been able to stay um, and represent my own school, which is fantastic. Um, and in addition to that, um, I just rolled off um, being the chair of the annual meeting and conference for NIACAC. We had a lot of fun in June. Um, and I just completed my doctorate in education um, with an emphasis on student veterans. And through all that, just recently had a baby as well. Oh yeah, I had a tiny <laughs> person six, 16 days ago, so very exciting. My goodness. Lots of things happened in the last few months. Awesome. Thank you, Erin. How about you, Kim? Hi. Thanks, for everybody, for joining us. My name is Kim Major. I'm an Associate Director of Admission at St. Anselm College. And I have been in the admission field. I'm beginning my fifth year in the field, but I um, have so I'm relatively new to admission, but I spent about 12 years working in higher education and independent schools working in advancement. So alumni relations, annual giving, operations, and finally donor relations and stewardship. Made the jump over to admission um, after volunteering for my own alma mater for a dozen years, realizing I liked my volunteer work more than my professional work. So I took a big jump in many ways and have never looked back. Awesome. Thank you. And last but not least, Bryn. 
Well, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to even be included in this group. Uh, well, I am 11 years into admissions, four years here at St. Joseph's University, and absolutely love it, clearly. I'm second generation admissions. My father was in college admissions, or actually still is, and uh, that's how I kind of fell into it by accident. But then again, I don't know too many people who jump into this on purpose. So um, mm -hmm. I've absolutely loved it. It has been wonderful. Prior to, prior to being here, I was at the University of Delaware, um, in the state of Delaware. And then prior to that, I started my career at Immaculata University. I'm a teeny tiny, at the time, all girls institution that since went um, co ed while I was there, which is a really exciting thing to get to see. Um, I am very involved with PACAC, the Pennsylvania Association for College Admissions Counselors, and currently sitting as the member chair um, and really hoping to take what WeCAP has started and really help bring it into PACAC ultimately. So glad to be a part of this. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Bryn. Um, so I'd love to start with the, the founders because I'd love to just learn a little bit more about the history of WeCap um, and kind of what, how the organization went from a vision that you had to the organization it is now with, I think, about a year of history now. So do you both want to talk about that? Sure. Tina, you want to go first? or? Sure. So, um, we have really started, um, Aaron and I um, have been colleagues um, at the University of Rhode Island and still um, love to work together, um, you know, love to help each other progress in the profession, um, brainstorm ideas, um, definitely a great colleague to have. Um, and I am also part of the annual meeting and conference um, planning committee um, and um, and have been for about two, three years. This will be my third year. Um, so just about, just over a year ago, um, we were coming back from the NIACAC annual meeting and conference, um, which is always a very exciting time for us, um, not just being on the planning committee, but also hearing all these great ideas that people have and all this fun new stuff um, that we'd be able to implement in our own offices. Um, and we came away from that conference really feeling like um, there are a lot of women who find themselves looking for other professions um, and in thinking about their future they often don't see um, leadership in admissions as part of that future um, and I think we um, are, are like-minded in the fact that we've decided admissions is the spot for us um, it's a great profession and career um, and a great one for women um, and really wanted to do something to help women become more confident um, in this career path, help them navigate it a little better um, and really just create a strong network um, so that when people do need help or assistance they have someone to turn to. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Erin, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, no, Tina did a great job kind of summarizing. Um, you know, the big thing was for us taking, you know, we were very excited when we left the annual meeting and conference. Um, some things that happened that were actually not as positive um, that also kind of influenced our conversation driving back from St. Anselm. Um, and so the big thing for us was taking what we saw and what was going on kind of in the profession and actually doing something. And so I think that's where we decided we kept, um, had a place in the profession. There's obviously fantastic professional organizations with NIACAC and the other affiliates in NACAC, um, but we thought, you know, with what we had learned and kind of what we knew that women needed a special place in our profession. Um, and really, the whole thing stemmed from a presentation we went to at NACAC the prior year um, where we learned that about 65% of our profession is women, but the leadership is significantly men. And so I think that was one big thing that was kind of in the back of our minds in this conversation. Mm -hmm that we needed to kind of focus on with a very heavy profession of women, but then very few women leaders. And so that was something I think that really motivated that conversation on the way back from, from the conference. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, and I know that as, as a member of the group just as much, I, I've loved seeing it grow. I mean, over the last year, <laughs> it went from a Facebook group that I got invited into to now it's, I think, just barely under 650, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. I was thinking about adding two extra people today but uh, to hit that 650. But yeah, we're at 648 now, which is very exciting because we've kind of gone beyond um, the New England area. Um, we started with creating the Facebook group and just inviting the 
women we knew in the profession. And then we invited women to invite more women. And so that's where it really started to grow. Um, and we have um, folks all over the country um, from different affiliates, which is fantastic, um, you know, all joining in. So that's been really exciting to see it go from just who we knew to almost 650 people. That's really exciting and incredible growth within a year's time. It's wonderful. Um, so can you, maybe I'll start back with you, Erin, and then I'll let Tina jump in. Um, you talked a little bit about the goals. Is there kind of an overall specific mission, or is it really just trying to encompass, you know, like you said, addressing um, the need for women leadership and supporting the roles? Are there, is there kind of a breakdown further from that? Yeah, I mean, we do have a specific mission. Um, and so after we kind of created the Facebook group, we decided we wanted to add some more structure. And so um, we did create a mission. Um, we're currently working on finalizing bylaws. And there's actually an official council. Um, there was eight different women we appointed to kind of be the leadership team for the group. And so the official mission is it's a network of admission, school, and independent counselors committed to developing and supporting women as professionals and leaders in all aspects of higher education, including including institutional and professional organizations. Um, all people who identify a as women are welcome in the council um, and it's really important to us that seasoned members feel welcomed mid-level and new professionals. Um, it's really no matter where you are in your profession um, we hope that WECAP can help you. Fantastic, thank you. Um, and I think I want to start with you Tina but then I want to open it up to Bryn and Kim as well. Um, what are some of the recurring themes of some of the dialogues you've seen uh, WECAP really take on over the last year? Sure. Um, some things are, are important to us that we structure some of what we're putting out there um, on the group with and, and what we've been doing in terms of professional development are sort of around the areas of education. Um, so letting, um, you know, helping women become more knowledgeable about the profession itself as well as women in the profession. Um, professional support and then also advocacy. Um, so those are sort of the three areas that we really hope the group um, focuses on. Um, I think there are certainly a lot of um, different things that happen within the group, um, it, but some of the more popular um, are about the admission profession and specifically to women um, in it, articles that are done um, you know, through through other organizations. Um, I think people also really respond well to the support that comes out from the group. Um, we really hope it's a place where um, people can ask questions very candidly um, and get answers from various people at all different levels um, with all different experiences. Um, we certainly um, also see a lot of job postings there. I think it's a great place um, if you're looking for motivated women to join your team um, to get some job postings out there. Um, and we really try to promote, um, promote professional development opportunities. Um, those, you know, conferences that people can attend, sessions, um, different things like this um, that, that happen that, that can help women continue to progress to leadership positions. Yeah, thank you. And I love the kind of space for advice and support that exists in that group. I mean, some of the posts that I've seen women across the country put in there, I mean, I know some, you've encouraged some to reach out to you as well if they feel uncomfortable posting in the group, if they want to stay anonymous with their questions and their concerns. Um, the founders and members of the organization have been great about reach out to us and uh, we're happy to bring it to the group at large and really kind of crowdsource some advice and some support as well and I think that's great to see. I think we do find that, you know, women also often feel awkward asking certain questions. Mm -hmm. um, it, they, um, especially if it's something that, that pertains to career advice, other members of their team or even their superiors could also be on the group. Um, and so we want to make sure that, you know, if anyone does have something they want to put to the group um, that they maybe don't want other people to know it's coming from them, um, they're more than welcome to email us. Um, we have a Gmail, uh, a mission women um, at Gmail, um, so they can certainly reach out to us um, and we're happy to post on their behalf and they can keep an eye on it and see what great advice comes out. Fantastic. And you said that's admission women at Gmail? Yes. 
Awesome. Cool. I hope that people continue to reach out to you, and I'm hoping to see the organization on Facebook grow during the course of this show. We'll see. Hopefully everybody's searching WCAP out there. It's WCAP, uh, Women Council for Admission Professionals. Um, so I want to give Kim and Rin some screen time as well to ask you, you know, as members of the group, what has this organization meant to you? Um, Kim, why don't we start with you? Yeah. Oh, sorry. It it, okay. it, it, it um, sorry. It um, flickered out for me. Um, <laughs> I was happy to join the group when I was in the development field. I was a member of Women in Development, which is a group of women in fundraising that had a similar mission to support one another. The development field, like admission, is very top heavy in terms of men, and so there were networking opportunities, job postings, professional development. So this was just a natural jump in to join um, and and I've long been an advocate for, for women in the in the workforce and it clearly or excuse me in the field and when I started doing the recruiting I found myself next to young professionals um, who found out that I had kids and asked me you know how do you do this and how do you balance this and I don't see myself progressing on because it's just too hard for women to do this it's too hard for mothers to continue on and, and I've been fortunate to be able to have some really good conversations to encourage women to stick with it, to, to give advice, to, to give some opportunities, to think about how to progress in the career, how to build the career so that when it came time to make some changes as, as parenthood came, ab came aboard, uh, to be able to, um, to make that transition. And, and that's one of the ways that I've been, uh, I think, pretty active in, in sharing information on WCAP and trying to, to serve as a mentor to, to some of, of my younger colleagues here in the office, but also on the road as, as a 42-year-old relative newbie to the field. You know, I'm out in the field a lot, and, and some people are surprised to, to know that, that you really can be on the road five days a week for six or seven weeks and, be, and maintain and progress in the field and receive promotions. And, and how do you do that? It's supporting one another, and it's believing in yourself, and it's using leadership skills and not being afraid. To, to say what you need, um, to advocate for yourself, to advocate for your peers. And so it's nice to know that there's a, a, such a huge group of women out there that share those values, that, that have had um, multiple experiences, and it really feels like a very safe group. It's supportive, and, and yes, there is the, the opportunity to communicate um, independently, uh, you know, in, anonymously, I should say, um, but it, it also feels like a very safe group, which is, I think, what we need as women if we're going to um, to break through that ceiling. I completely agree. That was a wonderful characterization of it. Thank you. Um, Bryn, did you have anything else you wanted to add or your own experiences with the group? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I actually heard about the group at the NACAC uh, last year. It turns out I was sitting behind um, Tina, I believe, <laughs> and, you know, somebody made mention of the group, so I clicked one on my phone and found it, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is this is great. I mean, after, I was eight years in uh, when I had my, my little guy, so he's going to be three on Thursday, and I think that it was... I love what I do. I love what I do. I've been blessed to have phenomenal women leaders uh, show me the way, so to speak, and I, it's been great. But all of a sudden, I went, wait a second. How do I do this from the ages of one to, say, I don't know, 10, when he might be able to take care of himself just a little bit? Uh, and, and how do you how do you fit those years into this with still traveling? Uh, I have the state of Florida and I'm currently located in Pennsylvania, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and, and how do you, how do you have it all? Uh, and so I think that, you know, it's, um, this group has been really helpful to see that there are other women like me. What I've found, um, I had to, I got asked to sit on a panel here uh, for our annual conference this past session. And it turned out I already, I was already moderating a session during that time. And they said, well, can you think of any other women Women in admissions who have kids who are going to be at the conference that we could ask to help fill in this spot. And I couldn't think of a single person um, that, that was going to be there. And I thought, gosh, wait a second, does that mean everybody leaves? And so for the last few months I've been really struggling with the, wait, is everybody leaving? Um, and I find WeCap is just very uh, motivating in that, no, we don't. And, and then I realized there were quite a few women still in the state of Pennsylvania. And so uh, it's been good. But I think that it's nice to have that on those days where you go, how am I going to do this? I'm finishing planning my travel right now. I'm stressed about leaving for NACAC. I'm already stressed about leaving for Florida, you know, and trying to prep the meals and get things ready. And, 
and you know and that kind of thing and I'm, I'm lucky to have a wonderful partner at home but he can't do it all either and so I think that this group has been phenomenal for that for me personally. Can I add something Nicole? Oh uh, please do yeah. Well, I think that's, I think uh, Bryn really hit on something, is that as parents, and I try not to say as mothers because I know so many committed fathers in the field who, who you know, do seek that balance. Um, so as, as parents, but I think also the pressure is more on women, and the, the stereotype is that women back off more and are going to be less responsible once they have kids, there's that, that stereotype out there, that sometimes I've seen some of my, my female colleagues with young children say, you know what, I'm not going to go to this conference, or I'm not going to do this because I, I want that time. And, and I totally respect that, and there are times I've done, I've said no to conferences and, and yes to travel, etc. But WCAP and, and other organizations that are other professional development opportunities that can be taken on your own time, that balance in your schedule is extremely important. So taking the time to read an article about leadership, about asking for a, for a raise, about stating what you need, or, or stop, saying, stop answering everything with a question, um, can be really helpful in a small snippet. And you can get that leadership development, but do it at midnight when you, after you put the kids to bed. Uh, hopefully the kids aren't going to bed at midnight, but you, you get what I'm saying. Uh, so I think it's, it's on your own time. Yeah. No, I think that's a really great point, and I think both of you touched upon two really important aspects of WeCap is that um, it's a council that it does, it exists in this really great big Facebook group that gives you that space to have this professional development, as you mentioned, to connect with each other, to just commiserate over the difficult moments, um, but also moving forward as an association to make sure that there's offers of professional development and conversations mm -hmm. like this at NIACAC, at PACAC, at NACAC, you know, is... I think having both sides represented is so important, and so mm -hmm. I'm glad that you touched upon both pieces of that because I think both of them are, make um, we cap what it really is and why we're all grateful to have it. And um, yeah, Nicole, that's one of the yeah. things that we've actually been able to expand upon this year. So we started with the online, um, but then this year at the New England Annual Meeting Conference, we were able to offer three different sessions. Um, one that kind of focused on um, leaning in, the concept of leaning in um, in that book. Um, one about mentorship, and then one about, what was the other one, Tina? Um, the other one was Breaking Through the Glass Ceiling, um, which had a great panel of women who do hold leadership positions um, and a great forum to ask very candid questions to them. Yeah. And so we were super excited to see some face-to-face -face conversations happening as well at that conference. Um, and then by posting them in the group, we've actually heard that some other affiliates are going to host some similar sessions at future conferences for theirs. Um, unfortunately, there's no sessions this year at NACAC um, about this topic, but hopefully in the future, you know, we'll be able to propose some things um, to bring it to the national level as well. Definitely. And, and, and we know that it's very difficult. Um, for people to get to professional development events, especially young mothers. Um, and so one thing we also did in New England um, for the annual meeting conference is we sponsored a lactation room, um, which allowed um, mothers who were still breastfeeding and needing to pump um, an area to do that um, in a safe, quiet place. Um, which was utilized, um, and we're hoping to put that out to some other affiliates as well um, to provide more access um, to people who might have had to opt out of that professional development opportunity um, because they um, didn't have a space for that. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you started to touch upon, you know, the sessions that were offered at NIAC Act because um, that's a topic I wanted to talk about too is just, uh, you know, you've provided these great resources online but also uh, brought these conversations face to face and uh, one of my favorite parts, I attended two of those sessions at NIAC Act and one of my favorite parts was um, the mentorship one. Uh, you encouraged us at the end to fill out paperwork to um, talk about whether we wanted to be a mentor, whether we needed a mentor, um, where we were in our profession, some of our concerns, and I'm really excited to see where that takes off and where that goes because um, it's so, it, it's one thing to know that you want to have a mentor, it's another thing to know how to approach somebody, um, how to be able to request that in general, how to phrase it, how to ask it, but you know, I think mentors are so important in this profession in particular as they are in any profession, and so I'm so glad that you brought that in too as a resource and as a conversation with the sessions.
Yeah, and with that one, um, we're super excited. We've been working on the pairings. Um, we had more people attend that session than we anticipated, and so we've been going through that list, trying to find good pairings in the profession um, for people to be able to be mentors or mentees, um, and so we should be sending those emails out um, as early as September for different folks who we think would be great connections based on their goals and their professional development opportunities. Um, that session, of course, was open to all attendees, so we had men and women at it, um, but I thought it was a really nice conversation about how to help others in the profession and then also how to get assistance like you said it's not the easiest thing to ask someone to be that your official mentor um, and so kind of we're gonna help people when we do send out those hey we think this is a great match kind of how to have that conversation with folks um, and really I think the big thing is mentorship doesn't have to take a ton of time um, it can just be a quick conversation or a couple text messages back and forth or an email um, and so I think in a profession like ours where we are so busy and we're on the road and we're doing so many things um, remembering that you know a couple minutes with someone at a college fair like Kim said could make a huge difference in their career and that it doesn't have to be this big official time-sucking mm -hmm. thing it can just be keeping an interest in someone who you know is going to be a great professional and would bring great things to our profession mm -hmm. definitely I, I you worded that beautifully you know I completely agree and I I think that was the beauty of bringing WECAP and its representation to NIACAC and what I'm excited to see down the road with how you mentioned, you know, uh, proposing sessions at NACAC and at other organizations. I'm excited to see how that takes off. Um, are there other resources or kind of things you see in the future coming up that, um, that you hope uh, WECAP really starts to, I don't know, bring into this profession? Um, we're certainly looking to continue um, with some presentations, um, both in New England. We also hope to propose things um, nationally and help affiliate members um, either look at similar presentations or developing their own. Um, we would love for that face-to-face -face conversation to happen um, all over the United States um, through the admissions profession. Um, we also are looking to create a website this year. Um, we're looking to um, bring this organization to other social media channels as well. Um, so that way we can provide access to even more women who may not be on Facebook. Um, I know certainly a lot of us are because of our profession, um, but not everyone. Um, and um, really just to um, outline uh, you know, put together and um, approve a charter and bylaws um, and some things that give this group a little more structure um, from from what it is in, it, in these early stages. Yeah. Um, I think other things that we're hoping to do in the future, um, definitely continuing um, to help with folks um, kind of progressing in the profession in whatever way they want to, and so hosting events um, where we can get groups together in person, um, either networking events or interview practices or resume assistance, um, as you mentioned, mentoring, um, so really focusing on that professional support aspect. Um, and then also, you know, looking in the far future, probably some kind of advocacy, excuse me, um, work, um, you know, there are definitely some laws and some rights, um, including maternity um, and sexual harassment that aren't at the level that they should be, and so I could probably see this group kind of going into that realm um, as we get more structured, because um, mm -hmm. it is so important that that groundwork is done. Um, and then, Tina, do you want to talk about what you're going to be doing at NACAC? Yeah, so I will be at NACAC this year um, in San Diego. Um, we are hoping to have um, a sort of meetup or luncheon um, with members um, of WECAP or any women in the profession who would like to join us that day. Um, something casual so we can meet each other, we can network, um, we can form those relationships, and then also discuss some of the issues um, in some of the um, sessions that, that we might be seeing at the conference. Um, we um, will definitely post um, a time and a place for that um, on our Facebook group um, and, and let everyone know um, through um, the other avenues as well um, so that people can join us, um, meet us, and let us know what they really want out of this group. Um, one of the things we hope is to keep you know, really trying to understand um, what this group of women needs um, at any given point in the cycle. We know that changes frequently mm -hmm. um, and try to help provide that support as we go through. 
Awesome. I'm really excited. Those are some really exciting initiatives. So I, I'm I'm really enthusiastic about seeing where WeCap runs and takes off with all of these great things. Um, we got some great questions from Twitter, so if you all don't mind, I'm going to ask them of you. And some of them touch upon some other topics I was hoping to cover anyway. Um, so Andy Gilbert asked, how can those who identify as men help support the WeCap cause? <laughs> Um, sure. I mean, we love men advocates, um, and we have had some men who are very sad that they can't be in our group, um, and someday we will probably have an opportunity for them. Um, but I think the biggest thing is, again, with the mentorship and, you know, helping, you know, in your office, if you have a fantastic young woman who is great in the profession, really helping support them, um, making sure to stay up to date on issues and topics like um, something like the lactation room that was needed at the mm -hmm. annual meeting and conference, listening to women in our profession and what they need and helping them get there. Um, you know, we were at a benefit that we had women leadership for that AMC this year that we were able to accomplish that, um, but it was kind of sad that it had never existed before. And so I think just kind of thinking of different ways to support women if you're a supervisor, thinking about ways to, you know, help if, if you have moms in the office that need assistance or dads in the office that need assistance, helping people mm -hmm. be able to stay in the profession is the biggest thing. Um, I don't know if Brynn or Kim or Tina has anything yeah. to add with, with how men can help. I, I think one of the biggest things is to speak up. If someone in the office refers to maternity leave as vacation, say, you know, I don't think it's vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when you see that the upper management is all male, say something. It does, it's, you know, I find that it, in our office, it's often women that are saying, how come it's this? It ha when men start speaking up, you know, I think it, it, it provides that solidarity as mm -hmm. well. So on the, those casual basis, the, the, those casual conversations, those casual mentions um, really help to, to empower women in the office to maybe think about things they might not have thought about before. And it shows that there is, is support and advocacy on the part of the males in, in the office as well. Yeah, Aaron, you mentioned um, professional development, and I think that one of the big reasons why I got into missions originally was just to say, uh, I need a job, let me get a master's. And what really changed that for me, you know, in that first year alone was having, and it was a male boss who just said, we're going to do professional development, you're going to go to this annual conference, I think you should try this, and we're going to invest in you mm -hmm. as a professional, not just me as a female, that can invest in me as a professional, and that and then he made the point of when we went to these conferences to introduce me to people, not just people mm -hmm. in higher positions, but women in other positions at other schools to say, this is what they do and making those connections so that I had, I, I had this kind of tether. So even on my long days and on our, our days when we're so tired and you know, that you can remember that there are other people going through the same thing with you and, and make friends, you know, it's not just about the colleagues. It is about the friends that we make so that we are excited to go to work every day. And I'm thankful that he pushed that to say, we are going to invest in you as a professional and that really has, has gotten me to where I am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and I have another question that is, um, is branching a little bit further into NACAC specifically. So Heather Shagaster asked, will we can't become a formal entity in NACAC? Seems like institutionalized sexist perspectives exist this group can counteract, that this group can counteract. So is that something you envision down the road? I know you said that you'd like to have more of a presence at NACAC. Is that something that you think the, the, the council can become? Um, I, I think, who knows? Um, I think the biggest thing with NACAC and the different affiliates at this part is partnerships. Um, you know, we are kind of our own entity at this point, but we did have some great opportunities partnering with different affiliates um, so far. And so for the probably time being that, um, but I think Tina and I are both open to making sure that this gets to as many women as possible, help as many women as possible, and, you know, if that equals being part of NACAC or being, you know, affiliated with NACAC, who knows, um, but definitely, you know, we think it's a great, a, a great professional organization. Tina, do you have anything, any thoughts on that? I think we, you know, as we look at, um, potential bylaws um, and look at how this group is really going to be structured. We are hoping to make it sustainable, um, you know, no matter what happens or who is part of it or who's in the leadership of um, WeCap, we hope that it continues um, because we do think um, it's a good resource for women so far at least. 
Um, and I think part of that is keeping those relationships strong with other great organizations that are helping um, very much to, to promote professional development um, of all people um, in the admission profession. Um, so certainly, you know, something in the future to look at. Um, and I mean, sort of to the same vein, we hope that women will stay part of this group. We found very few people roll out of the group once they're in, which has been exciting over this past year. Um, even women who um, maybe take a break from admissions, maybe move over to a different profession, possibly they take extended maternity leave. Um, we want them to remain part of this group. We want them to sort of stay up on the topics and have an avenue to come back into admissions if and when they decide that's the right path for them. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you very much. And I encourage viewers who are out there, if you haven't already done so, if you have any questions um, for the panel, any particular member of the panel, the panel at large, please use hashtag HigherEdLive. And I am keeping an eye on that and making sure that I'm going to ask these ladies uh, when I see the questions pop up. Um, but we're nearing the end of the show. Um, so I just want to kind of think about um, what are some bigger ways, you know, obviously we want to encourage anybody out there who isn't already part of WeCap on Facebook to check it out because I think that's a great starting point for them to learn more about the organization, but um, how can others get involved in WeCap? Yeah, I mean, we are so willing to have anyone be involved and help out. Um, as, as you know, we are just over a year old, and so anyone that has energy that's excited about this topic, excited about this concept, um, you know, Tina and I would love to hear from. Um, everyone's so busy in the profession, you know, there's only so much we can do, so the more manpower, the more we'll be able to accomplish. And so I think the big things, um, as you mentioned, definitely join the Facebook group um, and then participate in those conversations. Um, we have, you know, tons of members in there and, you know, when people do post questions or do have issues, you know, don't hesitate to, to chime into the conversation. Everyone has such great value to add to those. Um, also, you know, don't hesitate to ask questions of your own and post. Um, there's no bad post in the and it's always so interesting for Tina and I to see kind of where the conversation goes. Um, things we've never thought about have popped up, questions that people have had, you know, have happened on the, the thing, and we would have never gotten there if pe the membership hadn't asked. Um, and I think Bryn and Kim are great examples of people who are really helping mentor and participate in the conversations and add to it, um, which is so exciting for us to see. Um, and so I think doing that and then, you know, Tina, anything... You want to add? I would say if you if you do um, want to take a more active role as well, if you're interested in helping as a presenter or proposing sessions, or you have a great idea, um, maybe helping us write some grants or kick off some in-person, um, you know, events um, with other women through this organization, we would love for you to email us um, at admissionwomen at gmail. Um, let us know we, um, you know, who you are and, and what you'd be excited to help with, and, and we would love that kind of assistance. Um, and just getting the word out there, I think also inviting other women that you know to join the group um, who may not know about us yet, um, but could find the conversations beneficial. Yep, and any member in the Facebook group can add folks, um, which is really exciting. Um, so it doesn't have to be just Tina or I adding people. Um, so if you are part of WeCap, um, or if you're not, just ask to join. And we'll, we've been approving people during this chat, as you predicted, Kim, which is great, or um, Nicole. So definitely letting people know about the group, I think, is fantastic. Yeah, and I'll even put out there as a host of this show that if any of you have topics that maybe I can bring back members of WeCab come on and talk about, I would be more than happy to do so. Um, you know, it's not an official partnership, but being a, a member of WeCab um, and taking advantage of those resources within that group, I'd be happy to have uh, episodes on here. So please email uh, Higher Ed Live. You can reach out to any of us on Twitter as well. Let us know if there's topics you want us to talk about, and we'd be happy to talk about those too. Um, um, so I really am excited to see where things go with uh, with WeCap. Um, anything else that Kim or Bryn, uh, do either of you want to add anything else? Well, one of the things that, that I have been feeling for a while is to, is to take it beyond just Facebook, which, which is where I've been participating most. Unfortunately, my son's birthday fell on the NACAC, um, during the NACAC conference, so I, I zoomed in for, for one session, 
Zoomed out to, to go celebrate his birthday before my college reunion, um, so I didn't get to attend the sessions. But I'd like to take these conversations and move them more face to face because I think that there's real doing is in each of my travel territories, just putting out there to say, hey, um, I'd love to get together with other WeCap members or anyone who's interested in talking about being a woman in the admission professional. Let's have coffee. Let's after a fair go out and have a drink. And, and and just have some of that casual face-to-face -face conversation. So that's something that, that I'd love to do and have these sort of circles out in, in the field where we often um, need that support the most sometimes. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, we're hoping to, I'm hoping personally, to help bring this to PACAC. We've already got some women that are excited about it and, and how can we do sessions similar to what NIACAC's already done. I had a great conversation with Tina that that long ago um, about what they did so that we can help mirror some of that and so that some of our messaging is the same but also tailored to our own territories. Um, and then, and I just thinking about this sitting here, PACAC happens to do a lot of um, networking events throughout the year. We do four or five networking events specifically just for our membership. Um, and we invite people from around the area who just happens to be traveling into the area, you know, and it's to have drinks and talk. Sometimes we have guest speakers. But now I'm thinking, I think we need to have a WeCap one uh, specifically here in Pennsylvania. And since Pennsylvania might as well be two different states, we'll do one in Eastern and one in Western. <laughs> and I will uh, gather the women who are already excited and, and see what we can put together. So, I mean, you guys are already sparking other ideas, and I hope to help you, you know, get the message out there and, and that we can support women to do this because we can do this and we can have have it all. It's just about uh, doing it together and supporting each other. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and before I let you all go, we got a few more great tweets, and I just want to make sure we mention them before I let you run, let you leave. But um, Andy asked a great question that I know you mentioned maybe the group isn't quite ready yet to open up to men, but um, he wanted to know how can you know how can men stay informed as to how to um, help support the initiatives of WeCap. He wants to be able to pass the info along as it comes. So what's the best way for those that identify as men? to be able to keep it informed right now. Ooh, I, I think one. very soon um, that website that we're going to be creating, um, which is sort of tops of our list of um, next steps for our organization, um, and I think that will be the best way because um, we will have a space there where we can either blog or um, sort of post important um, articles or um, you know other other items that are sort of at the forefront um, of the issues that we're discussing on the Facebook group. Um, I don't think we're quite ready yet to have men be part of that group. We we do want to keep it a place where people do feel very safe. They feel very comfortable asking the questions that they do ask. Um, and I would suggest to you if you haven't been part of the group yet and you are a woman to sort of scroll through and see what some of those topics have been. Um, but I think that website will be very helpful to bring it to um, everyone who works in admissions um, to keep an eye on on some of the events or, or things that they could promote to their female staff as well. Yeah, We also try um, for big things to post in the different affiliate groups and um, college admission counseling and different groups like that so that folks can know about it. Um, and so we'll continue to keep trying to do that to make sure men are abreast of kind of what we're working on. Awesome. Thank you. And I think it's a wonderful thing to run into, right, is that the excitement to support <laughs> it is coming a little bit too soon to be able to support it on our end, but um, I think it's wonderful, and I hope the word keeps spreading. And um, Heather Shagaster, I, I kind of made another great point that I think uh, is great to just think about supporting each other across the higher ed scope as well. She encouraged WeCap to look at um, some other organizations and student affairs for models of successful mm -hmm. initiatives within professional organizations. Um, so I think, you know, there's some great partnerships that could pot potentially develop there, too. Um, so I encourage everybody out there to check out those tweets. And, you know, this is just an aside, but being a Twitter person myself, maybe we can investigate whether WCAP is already a uh, hashtag that's being used um, and can start some conversations around there. So who knows how this, how this uh, conversation can spread. Yeah, we d I think we actually have a Twitter. We just don't tweet a lot. So we can definitely <laughs> consider doing that as well. Well, you know who to talk to if you want any help. <laughs> hey, you can just be in charge of it, Nicole. You got voluntold. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Voluntold is one of my fa favorite uh, NIAC terms that I've learned, and I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, 
So I don't see any other tweets. Let me check one more time. Great, but I encourage anybody out there keep sending them along. Um, I know uh, Aaron and Bryn are on Twitter. I don't know about Tina and Kim. Are you guys on there? I think I have one. I never use it. <laughs> I probably I'm, do that. I'm mostly on just for my institution, um, but I will certainly, um, you know, get more active on it, especially with recap. Okay. Awesome. And um, as you mentioned earlier, uh, admissions women also at admissionswomen at gmail.com. Uh, feel free to email them there. Um, but I am happy to pass on questions as well. And join the group if you're a woman. And if you're somebody who identifies as a man, just hold on a little bit longer and we'll be excited to get you involved in this as well. Um, but thank you, ladies. Uh, and I hope to see this continue to grow and develop. And one more plug out there, actually, to any of you out there watching the show. If you're not at admissions, um, but you know admissions professionals that can benefit from this, send the group along to them. Encourage them to get involved in it because we want to see this keep growing um, and really take off. So thank you, ladies. Now, th is there anything else you want to add before we close our show today? No, just thank you, Nicole, thank for, you. for having us on. Um, we think it's so amazing that you took the time to, to spotlight WeCap, and we were so honored to be able to chat with you today. Happy to have you on. Awesome. Well, thank you, ladies, and um, I want to thank all our viewers. Uh, we, uh, we've had a wonderful dialogue today, and I hope that we can continue it. Um, so thank you to all of my guests, Bryn, Erin, Tina, and Kim. Thank you, as always, to our program sponsors, M. Stoner and Chegg Enrollment Services. Uh, coming up next on Higher Ed Live tomorrow, host Ryan Catherwood speaks with Ruth Walks and John Catherwood Ginn of the Virginia Tech Center for the Arts about engagement and fundraising in higher education, visual, and performing arts. Get reminders about this and other great shows by subscribing to the Higher Ed Live newsletter. Browse the archives at higheredlive.com or subscribe to the Higher Ed Live podcast on iTunes. It's a great thing to have when you're on the road, so check them out. Uh, I'm Nicole Lentini, back next month with more Admissions Live. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>